Hey guys, welcome back to How to Learn JavaScript for Minecraft Bedrock. And in today's video, guys, it is part two of the series. If you haven't already checked out part one, please do. It is in the top right hand corner of your screen. But in part two, in today's video, we're going to be looking at event listeners and event signals. Now, the way we listen out for event signals is by using the Minecraft server. By doing world dot or anything like that, we can listen out for things that are happening inside of the world. Now, please do install node modules and import them into your pack. You guys, again, can find how to do that in the top right hand corner of your screen on my how to install node modules guide. But anyway, guys, let's boot up Visual Studio Code and let's get into today's video. So guys, here we are inside of our entry file. You can find your entry file inside of the manifest.json. The entry file is here and that says scripts forward slash index.js. So that is what we have here. Now, because we're going to be listening out for world events, we do need to import world from the Minecraft server. So let's do that. Import and then in curly brackets, we're going to type in world. Then we're going to tell it where from. And that's going to be from, and then in quotation marks, we're going to do at Minecraft forward slash server, just like that. Now, if you guys do have node modules installed, when you guys type world and then a full stop, you guys will see all of these options show up. Now we have after events, before events, and everything else that goes along with it. So we're going to be looking at after events in today's video. So we're going to click on after events. And if you don't know what that means, you guys can always hover over it and it will tell you what you can do. If you right click it and say go to type definition, you can also find all of the information from the node modules right here as well. Now we've set up world.afterevents, we're going to be setting up a chat send listener. So we're going to do world.afterevents.chat send and then we're going to type in dot subscribe. And we're going to make this an event. So we're going to put two open brackets and an open curly brackets. And we're going to listen out for the sender of the message. And we're also going to listen out for the message as well. So we can tell what that message is. After that, we need to set up this right here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make it do a simple console.warn. So, set up a console.warn. You guys just simply need to do console.warn and then in brackets and then in quotation marks. That is what we're going to make it warn. But because we're going to be using the player's name in this or the sender, we're going to be using these curly quotes. Now, if you guys type in player, and then we get the sender by simply doing a dollar symbol and then opening some curly brackets and doing sender dot name just like that. Then we can type sent after closing the curly brackets. And then we can type message just like that. And then again in a dollar sign, open some curly brackets and type message. Now, as you guys can see, we've got sender right here and we've got message right here. So what this is currently doing is it's waiting for a chat send. Then, when the chat send happens, it's grabbing the sender and grabbing the message. And then down here, when it console dot warns, it's going to say player and then it's going to grab the sender's name just like that because it's already grabbed the sender and the message from here. And then down here, it's saying the sender and the name of the sender. So it's going to send the name of the person who sent the message. And then it's going to say sent message, and then it's going to show the message that we sent. So now let's just close this off by closing out the two brackets at the start here like that. Now, if we control S to save that and then load up Minecraft, if we do a forward slash reload now, you guys can see that the function and script files have been reloaded. Now, if we simply type hi in chat, you guys can see that it's console.wandas that says player siwsolus sent message hi. Now, we can do this 
a bunch of times, just like so. As you guys can see, it's printing in the console everything that we said. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code here and let's dive into a little bit deeper um, on how we can detect what message that is. Now, doing so, we need to put an if statement. So this will only run if this is correct. That is what an if statement is. So if we do if and then message, and then we put equals, 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 and then in quotation marks, we can put what we want that message to be. So I'm going to put test. So if the message contains test, so we open some curly brackets here. Let's do a function here. So we're going to say, if the message is test, we're going to game mode, just like that. And then we're going to type sender, just like that. Now, this is a function right here. This right here is a function. And because we've put sender next to it, that means that the function is going to run on the sender. So now if we do function and then game mode and put the player next to it, then we can do this. We can now type in whatever we want. So we're going to make the player run a command. So we're going to do player dot run command, just like that. And it's going to say game mode creative. Now in these run commands, you don't need to put a forward slash. So you guys can get rid of that right there. So now when this happens, we can also do a console dot warn and it can say player and then the player dot name has been set to creative mode. So we can save that now and we can load up Minecraft again. So here we are in Minecraft and let's do a forward slash reload. And now if we type hi, it's just going to say hi in the chat. But if we do forward slash game mode S, put ourselves into survival, when we type in test and enter it, if we type test and enter it, you guys can see that we have now been updated to creative mode. So the way that this is working, just to break it down for you guys before we end the video, this is how functions and event listeners work. So we are importing the world from Minecraft server. Then we're typing world dot, and then we get a list of different things and we're doing after events. So after this certain event has fired and that certain event is a chat send. So after the chat send event has fired, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the sender. We're going to grab the message and then we're going to warn to the console by doing console.warn the player. And then we're getting the sender because we've already grabbed the sender right here. So we're doing sender.name and that will be the player name, whoever sent the message. And it's going to say sent message. And then because we grabbed the message from here, we're telling it to print that message here as well inside of the console.warn. Then we've set up an if statement. So if this happens, so if the message, because we grabbed the message here, if the message is equal to test, and again, we grab the message so we can test for that. If it is, then it's going to run this function right here. And that's a game mode sender. So then the script is going to go down here and say, oh, this is the function called game mode. So then the function game mode is going to run on the player. And we've already got the player because we've got it running on the sender here. So now we've grabbed the player. What we're going to do is we're going to player.run command. And again, this goes back to the sender because we've got the player here. So the sender's running the function and then the function's getting the player. So then we can make it run player.run command and it's going to run game mode creative. And then it's going to console.warn that the player and the player's name has been set to creative mode. So if we just double check that and go into the console, we can see that player SIW Solus has been set to creative mode. So that does it for part two. I hope this helps you guys out with understanding functions and event listeners. We're going to go into a bit more detail in the next video in part three. So please do stay tuned for that. It's only going to get more and more difficult from here, guys. And if you guys feel like I'm not explaining things enough or giving you guys um, enough examples in these videos, please do give me some feedback. 
on how these videos are in the comments down below. So I do want to help you guys learn JavaScript, but we have to do it a, bit at, a little bit at a time. But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video if it did help you. And I hope you guys do subscribe to the channel as well to get more videos like this from me. But anyway, guys, it's BB Solus. Peace.